गुड इवनिंग सो टुडे विल बी लर्निंग अनदर टॉपिक सो इट्स नॉट अ टॉपिक बेसिकली टुडे विल बी लर्निंग पेज लिस्ट एंड फ्यू मेथड्स व्हाट वी कैन अप्लाई ऑन द पेज लिस्ट ओके सो पेज लिस्ट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट यूजेबल काइंड ऑफ अ डेटा स्ट्रक्चर so data structure which we used in any programming language okay so like let's say if you are writing any open source technology writing code in open source technology then you will be creating array okay and then ar like array can be a single value object and it can be object of array okay so what kind of operations do we usually need to need to perform so if you like if you have little background on java or anything so you must have or you must have read in your college that we have few loops for loops uh while do okay those kind of a loops okay so basically why we loop okay because we loop and then find out something okay so within that loop either we based on some conditions we find out okay that this uh, these details is there in a particular loop or not okay so those kind of operations we do so in pega also we do the sim similar kind of a things okay so we'll see how we can create a page list okay and then uh, we'll apply few methods on that page list okay because these are the most like these are one of the most usable uh, operations or the methods which we apply on the page list so the first one is is in page list then index in page list and then is it is in page list when and then remove deleted objects so we'll see this one okay so is in page list what it does it it will tell that okay uh, in page list if you are looking for something okay so basically we are like what we are doing is basically we are uh, running a loop inside that loop we are checking that this this particular value is matching okay uh within, within that loop or not okay so this value matches with with another property okay the second is index so it will give us that index that okay let's see if i'm searching for a particular things this object is there in this index okay and the third one is that uh, it's it's a similar to is in page list only just that instead of giving one conditions if you have to give multiple conditions then we give a when rule okay and then remove deleted object so what it does is let's say if you if you have a array or if you have a page list and if you want to delete some object let's say if you want to delete a um, index 0 then in that scenario we use that so let's see we'll we'll see one by one okay so let's go to the pega So if you see here, I have created a uh, page list. Okay, so uh, here how like uh, so first let's see the page and classes. So I have defined employee. Okay, as a code pega list. It's out of the box class for the list, and then employee dot px result. Okay, so this I have created a um, data employee class. So in data employee class, we have few attribute. Okay, we have can uh, employee id, we have name, and then employee is active or not. Okay. so that is how we can define the page list property so px result is a out of the box property okay which we can use uh, like uh, like uh, like this we can use for any any class okay to define a page list because it's a, if i open this property code uh, base class one okay it doesn't have any class okay so dynamically we can define the class and then this this property will act for that class to pre to prepare a list okay so here if you see in definitions what i have done first on the first step i'm removing that page because if we keep running then it will keep appending so that is where first i am removing that page so that everything will get cleaned up and then how like this is how we mention that index so if you see here i have mentioned that index so employee so this is the page okay a temp page and then px result is a page list property so on employee page i'm trying to create a page list called px result and in that px result of what px result of employee okay and on that we are i'm setting the attributes call employee id name and active so if you see i have given append okay so why append because what it will do okay append does is okay it will append so let's say if you have any index if you already have a record then it will add after that one if we do not have then it will create a index 0 or index 1 and then it will after append okay then if you are doing append again then it will create 2 if again we are doing append then it will create 3 so if so if you see this this employee id name and active belongs to one employee okay so that is where what i have done so first doing append so means create a page list okay create a stack okay and then keep the things on the same stack okay so last means okay whatever the index is there just add it on that one so that is how i have written uh, last okay so if you see here that we are, like i am i am appending three times so first second third so that means total i am adding three employees so if i'll run this one on clipboard we can see the three employees so let's run this one and see so now here it's not showing but if i go to 
clipboard so if you're running your code and uh, if you're running from if, if you're just running a basic code and a basic code or like rule okay then you have to go to a standard tab okay because we are we are not in a case context so we have to go to a standard tab and then if we go in user pages we'll find this employee page so you can here see that employee page of code pega list and inside the px result we can see three so this is the first result so first employee where we have the john and then employee id is one two three four and active similarly we have a second and we have a third third so basically we have a three employee now we will apply the functions which which i have just written here is in page list is in page index in page list so let's few things let's see how we can use that so let's say you have a like a list of employee okay in that one we have to find out okay so here in this one if you see i have given active is this one and then active is this one okay and this one is not active so let's say you have a requirement where you have to find okay that is there any inactive employee in this list okay so you have to like based on that let's say you want to set some attribute or something okay so we will also set up like flag okay maybe in your business scenario you'll be using in it multiple ways okay but for just for now here we'll use this to check that that n is there or not in this list so basically we do we have any employee which is inactive so let's see how we can do that so we'll add a step here So we'll say when and then here we'll try to configure expression okay so we'll click expression builder and in expression expression builder will browse and will search is in page list so you can question okay that if I'm new how do I know okay so yeah you have to remember these things like you know if you have to substring you have to use substring functions if you have to find out length of a string you use length function so similar to this one you need to remember this these things few things so search this is in page list if you're not sure you can just come here and search with page list also but yeah I will search with page list maybe the list will be a little bigger okay but if you search is in page list okay then yes you'll, you'll get the direct is in page list so now here you can see that which functions I need to use okay because we have multiple so so in Java also if you see like this is basically Java functions only okay so someday we'll, we'll have a session how we can create a functions also but this is basically a Java functions which is created by Pega out of the box okay and it takes parameters so here we can read the entire descriptions that what uh, what it will take as an input and what it will give me as an output okay so here we can read that okay the functions equals methods compare the value on the clipboard property the property is a part of the clipboard page which is in the page list so basically it will take three parameters so the first is what we are looking string look for so we are in active we are looking so we'll pass n and then in which property okay so in which property of the page list okay of employee okay so employee has that like which property is holding y or n so that is holding active so the second second parameter will be the active and the third one will be the page list okay so let me configure that i know it, it, here you'll not understand entirely so let me uh, write that value then you'll able to compare so here basically what we are looking we are looking for n okay where we are looking n so we are looking on active property okay because if you see i'll, I'll once i'll close i'll show you so we have that active property okay on which one we are looking and then we have the page list okay so we have employee dot px result so employee dot px result on this one so this is the this is the page list on this page list we are looking the value of active equals to n or not okay so this is what we are looking so if these conditions will match okay then here we can say that okay let's say we are going to set param dot emp active and then here we want to set no okay else we can add a conditions otherwise add a sibling below otherwise we can say yes otherwise param dot emp active equals to So something like that i'm just making some uh, business conditions but yeah in your scenario conditions will be different okay what you'll achieve it will be different so if i run okay let's see if i run then what i should see uh, employee id equals to inactive equals to no yes because we have one in n okay so let's run and see what is happening and also alteration will uh, alteration show you that how 
it will loop so basically it will loop on this one so what this page list will do if i explain a little bit in detail that it will this page list will run it will form a loop basically but we are not going to have a loop okay this is in page list will loop on this one and check okay that active equals to like if you're writing in java okay so it will loop uh, like it will kind of run a for loop and in that one in for loop inside that for loop it will compare active equals to n is there or not so if any condition is matching then it will set the value parent dot active equals to no okay so let me run this one so run and same time will trace as well okay so let's see here okay so if you see yet is we can see the true okay so the conditions became true and a parent dot active equals to we can see the value equals to no So we can see the parent dot active equals to no. Okay. So if you see like internally it was it was looping. Okay. And it gave us the value that yes, in this page list we have the value n. So let's let me change the value from n to m. Okay. And then see what is happening. So now here I'll put m. So if you see in this list, in this page list, we don't have any value called like active value, okay, with m. So it should return this one yes and and these conditions will become false so let me run this again so see this became false and if i go and see the value okay then we can see yes so i i hope this this will uh, like this will help you okay and you'll be able to form these conditions because i have seen many times people struggle to form this is in page list conditions especially the the junior folks okay like they, they doesn't understand how to compare and what happens most of the times what they'll do if they have to do they'll simply go and write a loop okay so let's say if you don't know about these functions then how you'll do it okay so you'll do it like this okay so i'll do it like this for each page in and then you'll write employee page list dot px result okay and then you need to do when rule and then here you can say dot active equals to an so if you don't know this function then you'll write like this okay but but this is not required if you're just comparing or if you're finding a value from only one page list this is required when you have a two page list let's say you have employee page list and then you have a salary page list or somewhere so on this one you can loop and then put a conditions on this one okay if you have a two page list then you can do it like this so one value this one will come from this this m will come from this page list okay and then it will find let's say on this m uh, like salary page here we have okay salary page and then from salary page if you have to compare active so here here also we have one property called let's say active is active so in that case what will happen it will loop and okay and check that each entry okay so this particular entry is there in this page list or not but for one page list this is not required you can achieve it like this okay so let's not complicate with two page lists for now let me delete that and simply try to learn with if you have one page list so we learn that okay if you have one page list and if you have a find out a value so again uh, so i'm repeating here okay so this is the value okay which we are looking and this is the property okay and this is the page list now here we have given a hard coded value but you can give a dynamic value as well okay it's not necessary that you have to give because see in your real time scenario when you're doing you'll be having a dynamic value only which you're trying to find out so let's here i'll define a dynamic value variable param dot let's say test okay and here in this one i can set n okay and here we can use that param dot test so in this way we are trying to find out the dynamic value because when you when you write a real time program okay you have to do it like this only so now let's run it again so here we are writing n so that means we will get true and we sh it should em emp active should be no so let's run and see that so see it became true now if i go okay and then just change the value to m here then it will become false see it became false and emp active equals to the value of emp active equals to yes and here also we can see what value we have passed it so that is how we use is in page list the next is so is in page list you understand so the return what it returns is basically true or false okay so you so the question is this is in page list what it returns so end of the day if if it will match then it will return true if not then false so that is where the uh, when condition is working 
now we'll learn the next functions okay so the next function is index in page list okay so let's say that someone uh, okay in your in your use case okay when you are in, in working in any projects you have a requirement where you need to find out index of any pay, uh, like index of any particular details okay let's say from this one we need to find out the index of that employee who, who is inactive and then take the details of that employee okay into some a temporary page or or like use for some details or um do some calculations or set some value okay so those kind of requirement we have okay so let's see how we can use that so for now i'll just this one and i'll add another step okay below so i'll add another step okay and here i'll say param dot active index in a paragraph dot index let's say so this is just a i'm defining a temporary variable okay now the function is very similar to this one only okay so here instead of is in page list we need to write index in page list so here again we can come and search index in so we have see we have index in page list okay and and that like uh, the parameter is same it will take the same parameter but this time it will return the index okay so let's say if anything if any like if this condition is true then it will return that index if the condition is false then it will return minus one so that is why it, it has been written return the best uh, one best index if matches is found returns minus one if no match is found okay so let's see that so here we, we can see that this n is there on index two so this is employee first this is employee second and employee third so once i'll run this one what we should expect for this value okay so we should expect this n okay so let's run uh, sorry we should expect two because this n is on two so let's run and see that what we are seeing the value of two so let's see that param dot index so see so param dot index is coming minus one because we have test equals to m so let me update that value to to n and then we'll see because here we are using a dynamic value okay param dot test and param dot test is y so definitely we don't have m so we saw that if we if it is not matching then it will give an index minus one so you need to let's see if you're writing a condition then you need to handle that if index is coming minus one then you don't want to do execute you don't want to execute your steps because definitely then it will fail so you need to handle that scenario as well see so the index came as two now if you want to set some value or you want to set okay so now let's say you want to set in a, in a parameter or in, in any property set that employee id of this one so let's say param.emp id so how you can access this one so now you know that index okay because before that you were not knowing that at what index that employee is there who is inactive but now you know that okay so you can you can put param.index like this so instead of giving a hard coded value now you can give that param.index and then you can say MPID. So this is how you can access the value dynamically. So first find out that index and then access the value. So now let's run again and see the value of MPID. So we should get that Peter. See, so let's see the value of MPID. So MPID is six, seven, eight nine zero okay so let's see whose employee id is six seven eight nine zero this one peter so you understood that is use case this one also that when we can use this kind of a so basically we are trying to find out because like see here we have only three lists but like when you will walk in real time projects maybe you'll get 500 records or thousands of records in that one you need to loop and then find out like this then because you don't know that index so dynamically you need to find out index based on some conditions so here condition is param dot test equals to parameter test so the value parameter test and active on that employee page list should match okay so if it is matching then it will give us the uh, like that index particular index and we can take that index and use that so see here how we are taking the value from that uh, page list using that index dynamically okay so this is the second use case now the third one is that it is page list when okay so what when okay so let's see that okay let me configure that above here just add and again here also i'll set when okay 
तो इज इन पेज लिस्ट पर so is in page list what it does okay instead of taking a string when name so the instead of taking the first property it asks for that um, it asks for that when rule okay and on when rule it will do okay so i'll not i'll, I'll not do it here i'll i'll um, i'll ask you to try this and i like uh, read this one and try to do that because here it will take instead of taking that value okay which property we want to compare it will compare that with that when rule and then uh, here the clipboard property look in so in this in the first parameter we have to give a page when rule okay you need to create a when rule and in the second parameter you need to give the page list and in that when rule you need to compare that okay active equals to n i'm looking so active equals to n that you need to give okay so this is what the third one is in page list so you need to try this one okay so let's move the for the third one uh sorry fourth one okay this one deleted object okay which i have mentioned here remove deleted object so basically remove remove deleted object is another use case is let let's say that you are you are having a big list okay and you need to remove few things okay a few items from that page list so let's say in this employee list okay your manager is asking okay or like your team lead is asking remove that employee who is inactive okay so how we can do that okay so in this one what we need to do we need to loop on this one and put a condition and then we need to set something okay let's see how we can do that so for that one i'll use this condition okay so in the, in this one only will do okay so we need to remove that inactive one okay so for that what we can do we can loop on that page list and we can set a property so pega is giving a property okay py deleted object so again this is out of the box property which we need to remember okay okay so what it will do it will loop on this page list and and wherever we are finding this condition okay wherever we are finding n what pega will do okay sorry i think this will not work we need to loop okay so let me loop on this page list for each page in and then we need to give so here for this scenario we need to loop okay and then we'll put a when condition okay and then here we'll write dot active equals equals to n so if this condition is true we want to set this one okay so you can simply ask that why i can't use this delete okay let me delete these things for for a minute okay or let me just comment it out we don't need it for now okay disable disable so you can simply ask okay that why i i have to do it like this uh, okay if this condition is running you can simply say that i can delete like this also remove okay and then you can give the property okay or value okay but no you cannot do that so basically if you do it like this okay it's like you are sitting on a branch and you are trying to cut the same branch on the tree okay so that will not work here so we have to set a flag and then we have to delete okay so here we are looping on this page list okay so this page list see here i have built manually but in real time you'll get this page list either from your database or from the external source okay so just for poc we have built that list so now you have that list on that list you are comparing active equals to n yes and then we are setting py deleted object equals to true so this is out of the box property what happens will set this property equals to true and then pay i will use a functions okay and then pay, that functions what that functions does is it will check uh, it will check that okay where where uh, wherever the value of that py deleted object equals to true then it will remove that uh, that object from that page list okay so here we can set param dot delete okay and let's see what is the functions name okay so we'll go here in the browse and the functions name is remove something like that i forget that function remove deleted object so see this is the the functions okay so remove deleted object so basically we have marked okay that i want to delete this one and then it will just ask the, to give that the page list from that page list we want to delete so we'll just save it like this and then we'll copy this page list so we, okay sorry so we need to delete will be again we have to do it outside that loop okay so i'll copy this thing 
so first in within that loop we have to set a flag so basically this py object is working as a flag okay so Okay, so ignore these things. Just focus on a step two. So what basically we are doing, we are looping on this page list and then based on the conditions, we are marking that yes, I have to delete py object equals to true. So basically we are setting a flag. Okay, and then we are calling a functions remove deleted object. So what this function does, it, does it, it will loop on this page list and it will check, okay, that what all what all object has been set the, the the value of py deleted object equals to true and then it will delete okay so let me run this one and then see and then just to view the value i'll again refer this employee page okay so that we can see how many records we have on this one so i'll just say update page just to see that okay or we can go to clipboard also and we can see but we want to see on the tracer only so we'll see in tracer okay so now if i run what will happen till this point till 11 point yes we have the three uh, in, in in employee page in employee page we have a three employee but after this one we will we will be removing peter okay where the employee is inactive inactive okay so basically and so let me run this one okay so now here we have a three okay so total three so let's see how many we have in the last so see we have only two so what happened here here we a py deleted object so it matched the second one see for, for the first one it became false for the last one it became false because for those two we have the value y second one it matched and then it it marked that second one py deleted object equals to true see this one it marked it, it like updated that flag if i see for that third one it didn't did it because it didn't match that flag so after that matching that flag, we pass this page list to this functions uh, delete object. Okay, this functions remove deleted object. And then what this function does it, it will loop and then check this flag. If this flag is true, then it will simply delete that. Okay, so this is the, the third use case or fourth. Okay, so we learned three things, okay, four things. First thing is that uh, is in page list. And then the second one we learned is in index in page list. The third one we'll learn like that how we can use the when rule. I didn't show it, but yeah, that is your task you need to do. If not, then post in comment sections. I'll I'll um, I'll teach you that one also how we can do it. And the fourth one we learned that yes, if you are on a page list and if you have to remove a particular index, okay, then how we can do it. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you, thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.